are back for Monday night time. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Daniel Hand High School football on Friday night against Foran High School of uh, Milford, Connecticut. This is Madison Cable Television. Uh, you'll be watching this on Monday Night Football and on the Hand uh, Cable Channel. Uh, right here tonight, this is Frank Torloff doing the play-by-play -play for you. We have as a call man, man tonight is our guest guest commentator, Marty Cunningham. Welcome, Marty. Well, thank you, Frank. Thank you. Okay, as we get going here, I know Marty and I are going to have a lot of fun working this night. We hope you folks all out there at home uh, enjoy it as well. As you can see from the camera, and Jim Kingsley is running that for us tonight, you can see that the, uh, the teams are, are ready to go. The captains are out there. Uh, hand is going to be moving from uh, left to right. Uh, just a quick up on this. The coach said this morning when I was talking to him that the wind he thought or we weather conditions could be a very big factor and whoever was taking the ball and won the toss would probably take the wind as the advantage. Okay, just to give you a quick, uh, quick up on this, Marty, what we're looking at on four end is that uh, uh, they're a good team. They always play hand very, very tough. I can even remember back uh, three years ago at, at hand's last championship here, four end played hand uh, right down to the last second or two. Uh, what, what they did last week, as far as their home, their opener went, was they uh, they had a 12, 12 to nothing from behind uh, victory. They went up to 14-12 over Harding of Bridgeport. So they know how to come from behind. They're a tough, hard-nosed football team that works off the wing tee. Uh, as you know, the wing tee is, uh, is is a tough one. It takes a lot of action. Uh, you, we were talking a little bit earlier, go Marty, a little bit about. Uh, the hands uh, youth on the line. You want to comment on that a little bit? Yeah, it's going to be a, a concern to the coach tonight. Is that the the uh, our our line on is uh, is inexperienced. We've got some sophomores. They're tough boys. They're going against an experienced team tonight uh, with with a lot of boys on the line, in particular with a lot of boys. Again, and just uh, so everybody kind of notices, uh, we've got a couple of changes uh, this year, Marty. The Daniel Hand football team has new uniforms. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Very beautiful. We don't see the tiger stripes down the arm this year, but they're uh, uh, the black pants uh, makes them look almost uh, Oakland Raiders uh, years ago, if you will. Well, it's always nice to wear a new uniform, too. I'm sure it's a firing up the team tonight. Yeah, the coaches have kept that quite quiet during the off season here, what was going to be and everything, and. Uh, and we'll give them a chance to get out there. So, well, as you can see now, as we're starting to set up on the field here, as I said, uh, Hand won the toss and they took uh, they took position on the field and and Foran took receiving, of course. So Hand will be kicking with the wind this period. Uh, try to drive the uh, Foran team, I think, all the way back and try to get a get them in a bad field. Put them in a hole right away. That's right. A couple of players to watch on the uh, Foran offense are uh, the. Uh, Running back uh, Damian Treat, number 32, is supposed to be a pretty tough, tough runner. So we're going to have our hands full with him. And they've got an experienced quarterback in a fellow named Chris Aronson. That's number 10, Chris Aronson, and number 32, Damian Treat. But let's hope we, we get them off the field pretty quickly tonight. You bet. Well, we're getting ready. The drums start to roll. Sean Lynch is back there, ready to do the kicking, kicking chores. And here we go, starting the home opener against Warren High School. Well, real squibbling.
rolling kick, which is something that uh, Sean is starting to perfect real well. Almost down back there, and they go. They get him on about the 15-yard line. Great coverage by hand. Uh, Rich number two, Rich Hart, took the kickoff, and he really had nowhere to go. He was in a hole right away, so good, good coverage. Good coverage is right. Good coverage out there. Okay, so we're going to see. They have the first chance to see the test against a uh, very inexperienced uh, line of Daniel Hand on defense here. But I will say, Marty, last week's game, I thought the sophomores did a tremendous job in the East Line situation. Oh, yeah. They played They played like uh, senior veterans, no question about it. Okay, quarterback gets under, takes the hike, hands back off to the fullback, and the football fullback is brought down with about a two-yard gain on that. Looks like Tim Cunningham did a good job of turning them inside, and a host of hand players made the tackle there. Well, let me tell you, that Timmy Cunningham is one whale of a player. He's a very seasoned veteran, and, and he's real strong out there. Very, very steady player. So he takes that outside linebacker position and does a nice job with it. All right, ready for the second down, and about uh, seven yards to go on site from about the 18-yard line. Quarterback gets under. Ready to take, take some snap. Oh, we got whistles. We got flags on the field. Looks like the met have been some movement on the line. Uh, wait, offensive? Or? I believe it was moving on Perrin, yeah. So okay, that's back. what it is. Going to put them back about five, so it'll be second, and it should be about 12 well, yards. Against Perrin, procedure. Lions will be penalized. Yards. It's real tough to be Back to, to be uh, on the 15 yard line and get penalized. They're gonna they're putting themselves in a hole. They really are. That's starting to walk backwards uh, and not liking it one little bit. All right, the quarterback takes it under the uh, takes the snap. Coming over here to the left side now. Fullback with the ball. He's met immediately by a staff of. Uh, there's a linebacking staff back there, and he makes maybe six yards on it. Not too bad to make up for that penalty a bit. Uh, that fellow we're talking about, number 32, Damien Treat. And it looks like he's going to be a tough, tough fellow to bring down all night. He hits that hole pretty quick. He sure does. He did a nice job on that from uh, from that standpoint of forehand. We don't like to see it from a partial partisan standpoint. It'll be going to be third down in about five. So uh, will they pass or won't they? They send a flank of a wide left, which is their speedster going out there. Okay, quarterback gets it, and he's immediately surrounded, and he's thrown for a nice four or five yard loss on that party. That's a great job. Well, two plays did a great job. Tim Cunningham caused him from turning up field, and Pete Lola did a great job of making the tackle. Uh, that's dynamite. Okay, so it's going to be fourth down, about nine yards to go. Uh, I don't think there's much question. They're going to have to kick this into the wind. Uh, well, we should get great, great field position out of this. Okay, let's take a look. What's going to happen? We've got uh, Eric Hamill coming back here to uh, do some receiving chores, and I can't quite read. Is that uh, who's the other man back there? Oh, That's Tim, Tim Cunningham. Cunningham yeah. Very good. Okay, ball goes. And Hamill lets out the ball roll. Yep. Looks like it went out about the 42, 43. Okay, so that was an excellent punt on Florian's standpoint. Yeah. Again, he kind of angled it a little bit, and uh, the wind moved it over there towards the sidelines. So we did go out of bounds about the 42, 41, let's call it. And we'll be moving ahead, still good field position. No chance for a return. All right, hands got a couple of split, a couple of receivers split wide here to the right. Matt Gentile, QB, under. Hands in to Scotty Gumkowski. Moves forward for forward progress, all maybe three yards. Durant did a great job of filling in on that play. Scotty, but uh, got personal foul on that. What happened? 
happened on the first one, Paul, uh, Scotty went down with the catch so that he, he was down and out as far as uh, being able to get up goes. When the uh, four-iron player came in and hit him, yeah. uh, he did have time to stop him. Yeah, I think a couple of costly mistakes there early by Moran. That not only in their own deep in their own zone to set him back, it's, now they've given hand a real advantage here. But the old PF is as good as a long pass. Partial foul, 15 yards from the point of attraction. Okay, we're going to pass then about, uh, well, first and certainly 10 from about the 34-yard line. Go ahead. That. Come Chrissy Doris. Best forward. Uh, Single set that time, and uh, Chris hit the hole quick, but... Moran did a good job of covering up. Let me tell you, that that deep blows. I don't think the hole ever was there. That yeah. fit nickel point. And that does say a lot for the uh, fairly big players in the front line here for a forehand. Yeah, foran has got a couple of big boys right over center. Foran always, as we said, plays hand tough. Okay, Matt, wide pitch. Scotty drops it, falls down. And Matt Jindal falls on it, I'd say. Yes. Uh, uh, well, Ferran forced that. They they were in the backfield, and I think it was number 56, perhaps, that was in the backfield right away. Scotty looked up to see him, and uh, fumble resulted. Matt Gentile being alert, but now we're third and third and eight or nine. Third and eight and nine. Timmy Hevesy uh, on the ball and ready for the hike. Scotty Gunkowski coming wide. Only one setback being Chris Torres, and we have the play on the way. Wide pass and very too much wide for uh, Sean, uh, Sean Lynch to pick that thing up. So it's going to be fourth down and about 11 yards to go. It's so, like there was, a, there was a flag on the play against hand. Well, flag against hand. Okay, I missed that one. But I'd say that's going to end up, uh, it'd probably, probably turn that, that flag down, I would certainly think. Yeah, with fourth down coming up. Penalty is against hand. Illegal receiver downfield. Oh. The penalty is declined. Bring up fourth down and 11. Well, even though we were talking about the uh, youth on the uh, defensive line, there's also some youth out there on the offensive line. And that's one of those things uh, they forget. And they, they, they're not supposed to release and go downfield until after the pass. Okay. Sean Lynch to punt. And he does. Good high spiraling punt by the land about the 10. Takes a Daniel Hand bounce and goes in the end zone. Well, unfortunately, he hung it up there, Frank. It would have been great if it uh, bounced straight up. It would have been inside the tent. So it was, uh, it was a nice job of hanging it up there. It really was, and, and I kind of think that caught the Hand by surprise. Uh, some of the boys also. You know, some of those speedsters that had a chance to get down there, might have been able to get down there and down it. Yeah, it would have been nice to put him, pin him back inside the tent. But... Well, it's starting from their own 20, so... Uh, well, there we go, the storyline. Uh, two exchange of punts. Hand looked like they had something going there, but it kind of fizzled out a little bit with that fumble. And uh, now it's Foran's turn from the 20, so they actually moved ahead about four yards from their first series with it. Okay, quarterback, under. Takes the... Okay, hands it off to the right. And then uh, does a nice job of loading a couple of tackles, and he's down with about an eight-yard gain. Looks like the runner was Brian Connington. Torres made a nice tackle on him. Good call on that, Marty. All right, so that was the, the best run from uh, scrimmage so far. As far as far end goes, and starts to spread the D out. Cornerback coming over. Take, take a flanker here on the left. Cornerback takes it. Coming back with the same play. I know he's up the middle. Oh, yeah. That was a sneaky handoff. Didn't yeah. Know the pullback. It looked like they were going to counter back with the same play they fooled me, but they came right up the middle that time. Okay, two big plays from Moran. Two big plays. That's right, leads it to the first down. So now it'll be first and ten from about the, uh, now that looks like a 35-yard line. <laughs> All right, ready to go with their second series now. Quarterback ready for the snap. And there's movement okay. on the line. And I'd say that looked like hand to me. Uh, looked like number 55 moved. I thought 55 and Ferran moved at the right tackle spot. Oh, did you? I didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, what I saw was a man going in motion. Looked like it dragged a couple of the hand kids yeah. with him when he went in motion. Five yards. <coughs> well, I, got, I got a little cold here that uh, may be coughing in your ear a little bit. I hope not. Well, it's not going to get any better than I, Frank. Me up here. <laughs> sure yeah. 
Yes, sir. We don't know if this tropical storm is going to hit, but I hope it stays away yeah. long enough to finish the game. Okay, and underway. Great job by number 36, Tommy Malik that time. Tommy coming from his linebacker spot did a great job of filling in. Well, let me tell you, there was an outstanding player last week against for his first varsity game against East Lyme. I talked to my inside linebacker, relatively small young man, but but uh, he's got an awful lot of speed and some good football sense up there. Tommy played in the youth leagues for a number of years, and remember, Tommy is uh, only a sophomore, so we're going to have a lot of good years ahead of him. There we go. Okay, now it's going to be second down and about three to the first. All right, man in motion going up and good hand off up the middle to the fullback, and he gets the first down. Let me tell you something, Marty. I, I think that this uh, quarterback, this makes hands off as well as any quarterback I've seen in a long time. Yeah, well, it's nothing like experience. Aronson is a junior quarterback, and he looks very cool out there. Looks like Tommy Malik again in on that tackle. Really good. I uh, have a hard time following the uh, handoff. Up here. So yeah. stuff on the boys down there. Very deceptive, yeah. Man in motion. Okay, hand off again to the right. Almost brought down uh, with a quick drive, but he's not down yet. What have I got? It looked like uh, Joel Donnelly was going to grab him in the Joel, backfield. Joel Donnelly had him and uh, wrapped and he, and he slipped off. So Coach told us that they have number 32 is a tough runner. He's going to be tough, tough to bring down the first time. The, the, uh, the program here, he's 185 pounds, I believe. Runs a lot heavier than 185, though. Well, you know, he's short, and uh, 185, when you put it on that short stature, is pretty tough. All right, second down, about two. Hand off up the middle again. And hand stuffs him up pretty well, depending on the spot where they end up getting a first down, I think. He's got a deceptive offense. It looked like a counter play on that. And uh, there's a little movement with the hand players along with the first fake. They can it back to the left. Okay, Chris Torres on defense down there, looking to pick up the signals from the sideline. Pause in the play in the set for uh, the defense. And breaks. Four runners up to the ball. I'm ready He's for still this. still in there 4-4. Okay, going up the middle the again middle with a big time. pullback. And again. he takes several tackles. Comes up. He's consistently shaking that first tackle. This sure. time, I think it was Chris Torres came in, had him. And he slipped off again, so he's he's a tough tough runner. Certainly is. He, he's, he gets a lot of power out of those first couple of steps as he hits the line. It looks like. Well, he had nowhere to go in that one too. He did a nice job of stuffing it, but he just kept the legs pumping and was able to move five yards down. Notice that Ryan Torres is in there too. So we've got two brother uh, sets on this team. Right now we've got the uh, Torres brothers in. All right, this time we got a nice play on the line. That was again on the carry. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that was Chris. Joe Donnelly, I believe, made the initial hit. Yeah, he did. Slowed him up, and Chris came up yeah. and uh, tattooed him a little bit. Okay, so it was uh, second down and about eight yards, uh, nine yards to go. So that was a good stop right there. Mm -hmm. Four end breaks. Quarterback assesses the situation, move up, moves up behind his uh, hiker. Man in motion left. Coming left. Coming coming good. And nice job. Nice hit. show. Nice bring There's down. Tommy Malik. Yes, Chris Torres. Matt Gentile Olin. That gang tackling is the thing that gets it done. I tried Tommy Malik. He's in on top of that first thing again. Slowing him down. Not just slowing him down, but he, he literally was going to bring him down. But he was helped out by a host of friends. Well, you know, Chris Torres and both Tom Malik from that linebacker spot. Neither one is really tall in stature, but uh, they see the play, obviously. They're both coming in very quickly. They have a lot of speed. Move well out there. Okay, quarterback. Man moving to the right. It's going to be a pass. Third down, looking for pass, and it's no good. Not a real good pass, uh, but it was the first one out, if you will. Well, number two was open that time. Rich Hart, but it passes behind him. So. It certainly was. Okay, I think the quarterback was feeling a little ruffled on that because he was starting to get pressure immediately. That was a big play, obviously. Okay, now it's he fourth down. The, to uh, punt the ball. Yeah. Okay. They, they're going to be well. Uh, the downs markers on the 34-yard line. They'll be punting from about the 46, and 45. And, and not sending anybody back. They're going to let this ball roll. There goes Tim Cunningham back. 
Got him. Oh, he's up again. Right by the roll. Yeah, very good kick. But it's taking a Ferran bounce. Certainly did take wow. a Ferran bounce right out on about the five yeah. yard line. Well, I guess it was a very good kick when you look at it from that point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not how pretty it is, it's where it ends up. Yeah. Well, I'd like to think he, uh, he had planned on doing that, but. Well, we might have seen a little effect of the wind because the wind is going slightly across the field. Uh, so he was kicking into the wind, but also it would have pulled it with that, that loft that he had on it a little bit to the right from him, from the kicker, and uh, move it towards the out-of-bounds side. starting on their own five-yard line. This is going to be tough. This will be tough because uh, you know the defense. They'll be real hungry to try to catch it back there, and they give a quick hand off to Chris Torres from the scoreback position, and he brings nice it up. Nice on the line that time. Certainly was, and Chris was able to make about four on that. So we're going to be seeing hands second down in about six yards, maybe five and a half. So the ground game is very critical down here because you hate to put the ball up this deep in your zone. Yeah, you really do. You need to get a little bit more room out there to, to free things up. Sean Lynch is split the far to the right here. Oh, we had a little mix up in the backfield. Scotty Gumkowski gets the handoff. And he gets, uh, well, he's talking about a two-yard loss, but unfortunately, Matt Gentile and Chris Torres had a collision back there. Yeah, yeah. Scotty was aware of this time moving, and uh, he's going to make, uh, make it very difficult here. Third sixty in their own end. Uh, the play was going to the left, and uh, Chris was coming over to look at his block into the right. That's the mix-up out there. Okay, third down and about uh, six yards to go. That comes back there, but the pass is deeper. Gentile, nice run. In fact, he may be just short. I would say so. It's going to be fourth and about one. Nice effort by Matt, but he's just short. Well, that would have been nice to see them make that one, but it uh, didn't happen. And there's well, no execution way. Execution is critical in that second play, you know. You pick up four yards on the first play, and Back to the line of scrimmage on the second play, and then picks us up and puts us in the hole. Hey, Shawnee Lynch is uh, going to be punting from about the one. He'll end up kicking it from about the uh, four-yard line. Not a rush on. Boy, he's got a beautiful kickoff. Oh, and it passes, takes a hand bounce, and if this hand can catch him back there, they will have picked up a lot, almost as well. And he goes out of bounds about the 40-yard line. to a clip on uh, Mike Burrell. He got hit from me. He looked like he was zeroing in to, to uh, make the tackle on number two. And uh, yeah, the see, there's a very, right nice, very nice block or a clip. But I guess from my eyes, it looked like a clip, Frank. But it, it did from my eyes, too. on the field. <laughs> well, the referee was right there, and he might have been being kind or something. I don't know. But uh, let's see. Okay, we got to really give some plaudits to Sean Lynch on that. A beautiful kick. It was a beautiful kick. He did have the wind going with him, and I almost think he kicked it with the wind in mind, the way it was going. But he got a lot of loft on that. That was a good kick in so, any league. Horan up the middle. And it's close to the down mark, the first down marker. Depending on the spot, might be a yard shot. They're coming back with that same play. Connington... Uh, I think he seemed to just run through a big hole that time. They're going to have to shut him down. Yeah, it looks like a little analysis. Oh, there's the end of the period. Oh, a about period. A lot, of, a lot of ground action. Okay, so as we, we, we're now going into the change of periods, the first and second period here at uh, Strong Field, the Daniel Hands opener of the season. Uh, what I think that really the storyline that we have as far as the first period goes is... Uh, Pretty strong defense on both sides of the field, and a couple of miscues on both sides that uh, became very costly for each team. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I think mistakes more than anything. Is if, uh, two tough teams, you've used good assessment there, Frank, but the mistakes have killed both teams. Uh, and Canned uh, would have probably marched up the field on this one if it wasn't for that second down miscue, and Ferran, of course, made a couple of critical, critical errors in their own zone. So. Yeah, I think I think what we want to watch a little bit more too is they Foran is starting to drive up the middle very strong on offense, uh, taking advantage of uh, maybe a little bit of that youth we've been talking about on hand side. Uh, we got a good shot there right in front of us now in about the 48 yard line uh, with second down and one to go. Uh, oh, it's a keeper on the quarterback and he passes and it's complete. 
Pacheco grabs him and runs him down at about the 14-yard line. The quarterback took quite a shot on that, but he released the ball just in time. Well, you mentioned it before. Aronson is very deceptive. He fooled both of us. It looked like a run. He came back and, uh, and hit Hart right across, hit, broke the seam right in the defense and hit him in full stride, and he was able to take the ball downfield. That, that's a piece that uh, uh, I think Han, Han football team worked a lot on. was trying to cover up that scene. Very hard to do because you can watch any pro game. That's what the quarterback and the receivers try to get to. Okay, four and first down for about the 15. And up the center. Okay, about a three-yard gain by Mr. Fullback. This time, uh, this time the line did a great job of meeting him right away. It looked like Tim Hevesy that time was the first to meet him. Yes, it was. Got a defensive tackle position, a sophomore. Came in and took a good rep, rep at him, and uh, uh, the momentum of the fullback carried him another yard or so, but Timmy held on and uh, got him down. Okay, four in. Throwing some receivers, wide left, wide right. Quarterback gets up, wing T is set. Quarterback, that's up to the fullback on the handoff, and he is grabbed and down for a loss. Greg Deconcilius yeah, did up. Greg Deconcilius did a great job. And this was the same fellow who's been shaking those tackles. And, uh, tackles and Deconcilius did a terrific job of holding on this time. Long enough until the, the rest, of, rest of the squad came up and uh, gang tackled. That's true. And he had some blockers out there, too. So it was a nice move of Greg coming in through there. Chris Greg's a good, good-sized young man also and, and very quick in the move. So uh, good well, job, Well, this is a Greg. critical play here, Frank. Third and 12. Third and 12. Let's see what we do. Quarterback takes the snap. Hooks. He's holding the ball and he's down. He slipped on the grass and he went down, of course. He didn't have to be uh, tagged or touched or anything. Once his knee hit, he was down. Aronson uh, did a terrific job of faking again on that. He, he sure, I tell you, from here it looks like, again, looked like a handoff to number 32. Uh, unfortunately for, for uh, Aronson and for Rand, and fortunate for, for Hand, uh, uh, he did slip on the field. Looks like they're going to try a field goal here. I think they're going to try. Well, I guess so. They've got a man lining up. They've got the win at their back. Uh, they're they're going to be 40 yard field goal. Yeah, if he does, he nails this thing. 40 yard is that's a whale of a. But this is what they should do. The uh, line of scrimmage, the 22 yard line. So uh, if they. Nowhere near. So Hand will be taken over on the 22. That was a smart play. Yeah. Oh, you're right. With the win, it had, probably has another 10 yards to the, to the kick, but he, did, he never did get it in the air that time. Yeah, he didn't show any loft, but the they lost was two yards on it. So uh, uh, I think after holding him deep in their own zone after that pass play, he's probably going to fire up the offense. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see him march downfield here before halftime. As well, a matter of fact, they're teeing it up. Uh, Right at the 20, so it's first and 10 from the 20 for Daniel Hand, moving from uh, right to left, across the field here. Okay, big hole up the center for Chris Torres, met by the safety on the 40. Beautiful 20-yard game for Chris Torres. Well, you know, Chris Torres is uh, last year and this year again in the first game. Uh, you give him that hole, he hits it so quickly. He's going to pick up that other that next 10 yards, and uh, I heard Jerry Johnson on the telecast last week he likes to punish the tacklers, and he did it that time. Right. Certainly he did. Give the line of credit on that. It looked like he came between Tim Hevesy and uh, Andy Grennan that time. Sure did, and there was a he could have driven a trailer truck through that. I think beautiful line, beautiful job on it. Okay, Scotty Gonkowski up the center for a nine-yard gain. Well, excuse me, he came up to the left side. Had some more good good marks out there. It looked like uh, it looked like he blocked that time. I missed one of them. It looked like Joe Donnelly might have been. Back on this side over here. Turn that, turn that in now. And of course, Scotty is a heavy runner, also. All right, Consilius at throw. Gumkowski at tail. You got a keeper on the quarterback. He hangs on pass. Beautiful to Sean Lynch. Turns it up fail for about another four or five. Daniel Hand first down on the 34 yard line. Well, Matt, Matt Gentile looked very confident on that. He rolled and fired that pass right in there. Excellent. Uh, matter of fact, funny thing, this summer I drove into Aronson's service center and out comes to pump the gas with Matt Gentile. I said, hey, that's a great way to keep that throwing arm in uh, in shape by pumping that gas. So uh, anybody else that went into Aronson's would have seen him pumping gas too, keeping it in shape. 
Good work going on that, Matt. You don't think there's a relationship between uh, the quarterback, Aaron, and our garage over here, do you? Yeah. <laughs> wrong wrong game. <laughs> yeah. Wrong game. Yeah. I, well, you never know. You never know. That's right. All right. Great play selection that time. The two nice running plays. Nice pass. Brands, you got to have Fran guessing what's coming next. Yeah, that, that kind of balance is absolutely marvelous if you can set it up that way because you're right, the other team does not know what's coming next. They have to play a very general defense, if you will, which they do. Two down men up front, spread out their, uh, their tackles, and takes passes up the middle again to, uh, to Chris. Chris uh, goes up there and uh, does a number for about another five yards. That, that left side of the line looks like Brandon and Donnelly doing a great job, and then we had some lean blocking coming through there. Well, I mean, uh, Donnelly is one well of a strong young man, and uh, uh, Drennan as a sophomore is coming right up on him too. So uh, good teamwork. You can see them uh, kicking it out together. We got timeout on the field, called by Florian, I believe. It's going to be uh, second down when we come back to play from about the 28-yard line. Danny Hanna about six for the first. Get it out while the timeout was in progress. Daniel Hanna ready to break huddle. Sending Sean Lynch out wide to the right. Scotty Hennessy going out too. Both men have a, have a reception tonight. Matt Gentile getting ready. Gets under the snapper. Takes the ball. Hands off to Scotty Gapkowski up the center. Scotty's up there, depending on where the snap is, he may be able to get a first down on that. Big hole that time from the right side of the line. I know Timmy Hevesy's over there. Looks like Greg DeConcellius did a nice job, too. Well, the holes are beginning to open. I think the boys are determined now, uh, you know, which is typical of a hand team. Firing out ahead of that. But it's going to be third down at about one. And uh, depending on what the play selection is on this, you know that they're going to be expecting. Okay, yeah, that's going to be. Encroachment by number 63. That's right. So that will be should be the first down for him. Well, it looked like Ferran was guessing up the middle. Like, they were a full four, and everybody was stuffed up the middle that time. Yeah, you know what? I think that was a good guess. Oh, yeah, that part. Yeah. We had a nice time to run wide, but I think the, uh, it was a better time for encroachment, right? Yes, it was. We'll take the encroachment. That uh, doesn't go on our kids' stats, but uh, it's a first down. That's a first down. Big first down. Oh, something new from the hand sidelines here. <laughs> I haven't heard that before. All right. And pass. Open is Sean Lynch, but the ball is right off his fingertips. Too bad. It looked like number 80 came in. Matt made a nice pass, but he had to adjust because he had some hands right up in his face. Almost a nice catch. Okay, Sean Lynch comes out. Tom McGrath goes in. Uh, all right. Jimmy Hevesy gets under. And a hand back. Boy, Ferran is really stuffed up the middle. Eight plays there. Well, they Scotty Gipkowski going wide. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. He about a yard and a half lost. They had that one absolutely uh, yeah. diagram. He only makes it up to about three or four yards. Looks like good lead blocking by uh, Timmy Hevesy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's going to be fourth down. Oh, my about... apologies. That's Rob Mason, number 72. All right, Rob. Yeah. Good. Good job. Okay, it's going to be fourth down in about 18 yards. I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Uh... Oh, I guess they're not going to kick into the wind. Sean Lynch could make it from about this distance with everything going right. But uh, he's going to go for it. Spread... Uh... Uh, Scott Hevesy out right, Sean Lynch to the left, pass is coming over the corner, and it's oh. right off the screen again. Check uh, pass intended for Lynch. Almost. That does look like uh, four and Sean didn't quite turn the right way on that, unfortunately. Well, you know what? I think I think the pass had to go where where uh, it was the only place he could, with the Ferran defendant, covered the play very well. And that's for where it was safe, and uh, it would have been a very... Tough catch. Yeah, fade, fade to the corner, and, and Sean had to take him to the in, tried to get him fake to the inside, 
almost in a post pattern. Mm -hmm. And uh, which he did. He had him faked in there, but uh, Sean couldn't quite turn around and get back there in time for Matt to make the timing on that. Key thing is we keep him down here with five minutes to go. That's right, five minutes to go. Second period, and Hen meets the runner right at the line of scrimmage. That time, Tim Hevesy met him immediately. So Tim's obviously beating his man in the line of scrimmage. He looks fired up. Tim met him, and uh, there's immediate tackling right after that. So it looks like everybody's on the ball. Okay, it's going to be second down, about six yards, possibly seven for four in. They're going to be taking the ball, uh, picking it up right at the 20-yard line of four in. Second period, Madison Cable TV bringing you this Friday night game at Strong Field. Handoff goes to the left, and almost making the corner, uh, possibly first down territory out there. Looked like Rod Dezim almost made a nice play in that. He got his hand on the runner in the backfield, and he just slipped off. Well, third and one. One and a half, probably, out there. Yeah, Rob almost got him down out there, and uh, but that, that's, that was pretty good speedster out there. Yeah. Big play here. I wouldn't be surprised if Ferran went to 32. That seems like the go-to guy in this situation. And he's back there. They've taken the wing off the tee. Man in motion, no QB, thing. he's taking it up the center. Also a good call. There it is, first down for four and they'll be taking the ball at about the 28. Now we're probably getting a little override from the field announcer here too, so. Uh, yeah, we gotta get him to quiet down a bit. <laughs> Okay, first down, 28-yard line. Corian takes the ball. Ready, hand has got their defense in position. Hand off up the middle to 32 again. Fullback takes the ball, four or five yards. Well, his low center of gravity, he just keeps pounding people. He's that time, hand met him with three or four players. That's what it took to take him down, but he, in the process, picked up five yards. Got a couple of pretty good sized boys leading block out there. What does the program say on 61 of four and? What uh, kind of size is he carrying? Uh, looks like the fellow's name is Paul Veda and it's uh, 61 200. 61 200. Well, he's a good sized boy. And uh, I think he was part of the problem for him that time. Okay, ball's coming to the right. And a handoff. Ham meets it very, very squarely. Uh, maybe two yard gain, so it'll be third down about the yard, yard and a half to go. Same position we're in. Stop short of the first down. One of our Martin. linemen came in from behind, and Pete Lola made a nice tackle out in front of him. I have to start acknowledging some of these linemen. They uh, they uh, get in the middle of that action. It's tough to see their numbers. So. Okay. And defense gets ready. Take on the action. Last time the QB sneak in the same position. Don't think they'll run it again. It's going to be in the 32. Oh, nice and beautiful. Great job. Beautiful meet out there. That was uh, Tommy Malik, it looks, it looks like. How did With he the get around there without breaking the plane in time? I don't know, but he was two yards in the backfield. Let me tell you. He almost took that hand off himself yeah. out there, buddy. Short. It'll be fourth and inches. Big, big play by Tom Malik that time. And the nice thing, too, Tom met him. And uh, there were a host of tacklers right on top of him. No, no place to go. He couldn't even really get a good stretch out. That's almost the situation it was. Okay, they're going to hand thinks they are going to punt, and they should from this position on the field. They better watch that wind again. That last, uh, they learned anything from the uh, from their own kick. We've got Eric Hamill's back, and uh, Timmy Cunningham is back. Ball is hiked. Kicker goes. They put on a rush. <coughs> Tim Cunningham with the reception. Cunningham with the ball, looking for the corner. The wall was set to come up here on the left side. Didn't quite make it, though. Didn't quite, almost. The wall was set up beautifully. One one tackler to get by and uh, didn't wasn't able to make it. Well, the kick took him a little bit right. And number 55 did a superb job of tackling him. 55's got some speed on him. Well, let, let me say, there's one thing you forget a lot of times from anybody's standpoint is there are two sides of the field, and the young men on both sides can make good plays. That's so. right, that's right. <laughs> Got to give uh, Corrin uh, the break, breaking the wall on that one. Okay, Matt with the ball, getting for pass, first down, going long, the Shawnee, almost, right off his fingertips. Uh, Son of a gun. Boy, Matt's putting the ball right there, it, it just was a little bit long. Just a Shawnee. step. The last a couple of uh, passes have been... Uh, right off his fingertips, yep. yeah. 
Uh, Shawnee came off the field and see the coach going, uh, trying to show him how to try to catch that thing. <laughs> Don't blame your coach. I'd try to show. I'd do it for him if I could, but unfortunately, he's the kid that has to execute. And Sean's doing a great job tonight. Tough to get out there and do it. It looks like they're in a 4-3. They're in a pass defense. Pass defense looking four. again. Ham's going to try to bring it down the field. Passes out to Timmy Cunningham. Now we got a we got a flag on the field. I don't know whether it was a face mask or what it happened to be. The hand had a couple blockers out there. No, it's against hand. Of course, yeah. looking yeah. the yeah. play. to Cunningham. However, there was a flag on the play. Yeah, I think probably blocker downfield. Yeah, I probably. The, 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 who was down there with Timmy? Uh, I didn't see the numbers, but my feeling was it was field. lineman. Well, yeah. the, tough, the tough thing too is uh, even if we didn't have a penalty, that Timmy made a nice catch. It was a nice pass, but it was right. There was a couple of foreign players right under him there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one of the uh, foreign players had fallen down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it just happened to be when Timmy turned around, he was right under his feet. So, well, if you're gonna fall down on the field someplace, fall under the uh, fall under the carrier, receiver. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Good time out here. There's only uh, 150 left, and uh, this is a critical series here. Yeah, this right hand is trying to pass it to try to move it down quicker because uh, we sure have had a defensive battle here. Well, what you can't see on TV is there's a very stiff wind, so it's going to be tough to those passes by Matt that were nicely timed because he is thrown into a stiff wind, and I think it's going to get worse as people go on. Yeah, Look at we that are. flag over there, it looks like uh, the wind is blowing probably uh, south. I don't know, but it's blowing toward the toward our <laughs> it's north well, against us right now. I'd say it's a northeast wind, right? I mean, northeast? Okay. That's well, what I'd say. It's northeast wind. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> camera moves <laughs> over to the old glory over there, and it's waving in the breeze with uh, <laughs> all the banners from the state championship teams here. And. Uh, by the time this is broadcast, Monday Night Football and Madison Cable TV, we will have known whether we had the tropical storm uh, come through or not. That's what we're facing up here. Handoff to Chris Doriaz up the center, and he is rolling. Met hard by uh, the safety back there. Almost ran the safety over it. Nice job. First down. Well, Chris Doriaz just, again, hit that hole nicely after, his, after the first contact, kept his feet moving. And he just punished number two, Rich Hart, on that tackle. Well, Marty, I know you can remember Chris, when, as I can, several years ago when he was uh, uh, a cute little blonde-headed kid. Chris, you're a cute little blonde-headed kid still, but uh, we won't tell you because you're as big as we are now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, Scotty Gumkowski up the center. Nice run by Scotty. He got hit and lunged for another couple of yards. We've got 1.16 okay. on the clock here. So the hand team is moving fast, almost no hot offense. Penalty here. Looks like Eric, Eric Hamill, that's Eric right. Hamill's I think his first offensive play other than uh, being out there in downs. On, up. Eric's a sophomore, and uh, he looked a little confused on that one. And uh, uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll, he'll make a contribution tonight. Uh, Her, yeah, I understand Her, Eric has been injured somewhat this year, so he hasn't had a lot of time to be out there in a varsity situation as a sophomore. But... Uh, Coach really uh, praises him as uh, being maybe a very, very strong potential uh, running back for Daniel Hand. Well, Eric's, Eric's very fast. He's got a great attitude, as all the boys do. And uh, he's wearing uh, quite a number there, number 22. Yeah. Quite a legacy behind that number between yeah, right. uh, Ned Lynch and uh, Jimmy Bell. Okay, another pass, Matt. And it's tipped at the line, and it goes for not. It's like number 77. Or <laughs> Well, 80, Kevin Lockley, I guess, tipped it. All right, Daniel Hill's going to have fourth down, five to go. Now, uh, Ferran knows they're going to pass right now, so the linemen are coming in with their hands up. Well, I wouldn't be surprised a go-to situation. They think it's going to be a pass if uh, Chris is in there. Yeah, Chris Torres is in. He's a go-to guy a lot of times. Critical play with a right. minute left in the hand. The linebackers are staying in tight, though. So, but it's going to pass. And it's up to Sean. He's got it on the 25. Looks to elude. Doesn't yeah. quite. Terrific job. You know, uh, look like number 24 coming in to uh, into the backfield, look, to making the tackle and uh, about to make the tackle. And Gumkowski and Doris did a superb job of knocking him out of the play. Yeah, nice. I, I, they did. Nice team team block on that, yeah. really. Giving Matt just enough time to hit uh, Sean Lynch over yeah. the middle. Just enough to set it up. It's like and have 41 a seconds left here. Yeah. Okay, Matt. 
Pass him deep down in that corner route again, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Well, that looked like that same corner play. Matt threw outside, and it looked like Sean turned inside that time, so there seemed to be a little uh, yeah, confusion on I there. would say so, too, unfortunately. I don't know. I, uh, you know, you hate to second guess. You don't know what's up. You don't know the uh, scouting reports on the other team, and they usually are scouting reports. But uh, maybe that would have been a case for a quick, a little more down and out, out of bounds, uh, try to come down a couple of plays instead of all for one. But well, that's probably well, with what 42 in. seconds left. It's tough. You know, you, yep. the, the idea may have been going to the end zone four straight times. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Ferran would be content to run the clock out here. Looks That's like right. the penalties against them. Uh, yeah. I think it was number 61 may have moved on the line of scrimmage. Lined up offside. No, lined up offside. Oh, so. Move the ball back to the 15, first and 15. Now well, there's only 33 seconds left, so. They're going to go. They're spreading well, number two. Lot. They better number break out of that. Number two you know, <laughs> their receiving guy out there on the left. We got more whistles. Oh, 55 down there for Foran is a, looks like an M48 tank. <laughs> and he goes two ways out there. What's he looking like size-wise? The fellow's well, name is Kevin Mayer, and uh, he's only 175, but he's 5'8". So again, you put that on a short stature. And... Yeah, sure, he almost looks like he's got a flak vest and everything else on. He's a, he's a rugged-looking kid down there. It looks like he's playing both offense and defense and guard. Well, I was uh, I was down at Ferran watching the, uh, the freshman play. Ferran, uh, freshman, uh, had a tough loss to Ferran. They were winning late in the second half and lost the game, but they played a good game. But uh, I watched, I was looking at the varsity, Ferran varsity, and uh, they they look as well conditioned as our team. They they really were putting them through the paces uh, uh, last Thursday when it was down there. Ferran, well, like I said before, always plays hand very very tough, and I'm always amazed that they have not had a better uh, winning record over the last few years in general than, than uh, they have had. They have a lot of tough losses, uh, two, three uh, point losses, as a matter of fact. And is calling a timeout, trying to pin him down here. Uh, Aronson's just content with going down on one knee and uh, running the clock out. They're not going to do anything down here. So. Yeah, third down. We got third down out there in about 16, 17 yards. So, yeah, you're right. Hand is trying to see if they can just get him to freeze the ball down there with maybe just a chance, just to run it back, just anything. Hand has one timeout remaining, so obviously if he goes to one knee again, they're going to call a timeout, which will force Moran into a fourth down situation. Uh, okay. It'll be tough to get a playoff, but who knows. Well, there it is. Like timeout again on hand, hopefully. Sure looked like the uh, left side of the Moran team moved, but and here calling it. Had a timeout, and uh, Moran's running off the field, so hand is still on the field. Time will run out in the first half with the score hand zero and four. Well, and zero. had the timeout left, uh, but anyway. Well, it seems some confusion. Coach Philippon and, and Sekula around the field. They seem concerned. It looked like we had a timeout. Uh, we're going to have a meeting out there see what the situation was because uh, obviously he did want to try to stop the clock would have had one more shot at it it looks like with a fourth uh you know with a fourth down and a punt something like that you can always run it back in who knows well they seem content with the explanation so whatever well, particularly the ball game that we have in before the band strikes up uh, just uh want to do a little storyline for this first half here marty okay yeah i think uh, the, the the headline of the, of the uh first half is that we had the big opportunity we had early in the first quarter, when we were down deep in their own zone, uh, you know, that, that was a tough opportunity to pass up. The penalties killed us, the penalties killed them, but give credit to both defenses for playing tough D, making some big plays. We shut them down when we had to, they shut us down when we had to. Uh, we were down, I'd, I'd have to say we outplayed them, we were down in their zone more, you know, we had a couple of passes to the end zone that could have been touchdowns, and uh, overall I think we outplayed them, the key thing is the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. That's right, I, I think you're right, I would have to go along with that, uh, really no serious threat on Foran's offense, if you will, uh, which speaks well for Hans' uh, very inexperienced uh, line, but again, it's 0-0 zero, zero out there, so if you go to halftime, 
Bands on the field, Daniel Hand. We're going to try to run a little of this uh, to give those kids some credit who worked so hard all year long. So I uh, also want everybody at home to notice the uh, benefit of pick by the coaches and acknowledge it halftime. It's a nice way of getting some of the, the youth players in, involved. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with all the games, but I do know uh, I do know the senior team, which is uh, really next year's freshman team, the coach by Mike T. Uh, they had a big, big win over uh, our rival Brantford, who's always a tough team in the having coached in the youth league. Uh, they, they're always a tough team. I lost a couple of times, a couple of close games to them. So this it was nice to see Mike's team win. Uh, I think I believe the score was 26 uh, to nothing, and uh, wow. a lot of passing. You would have thought they were a pro team. I came down for a few minutes and. Uh, so they throw a couple of nice touchdown passes. So, uh, the youth teams, I know, play tough games. I think we, we uh, I'm not sure what the outcome of all those games will, but we're going to acknowledge some players here. Uh, uh, we'll read you something here. Each week at, the, at all the games, four youth players will be honored at halftime. This week's chosen players will receive official Hanhine Tiger paws for their helmets presented by the Boston coaching staff. Why don't we acknowledge these boys, because it may be, uh, they, may, they come out pretty quickly. Uh, the youth division, uh, you're going to see number 42, halfback Josh Stillwell. Uh, this is the the, uh, the very youngest group of players. And they start. Uh, geez, I forget what the age group is, but they're they're fourth, fifth graders. Uh, and then you get into the sixth, seventh graders in the junior division, the seventh and eighth graders in the senior. Uh, number 46, uh, defensive guard is going to be Tom Hansen. You're going to see number 13, fullback Chris Milligan. Number 21, defensive back Nick Hill. From the junior division, Panthers. There's two junior teams, which is great. And a big turnout in that that age group. Uh, number 87 wide receiver Ryan uh, looks like Ryan Stir, and fullback uh, number 36 Tom uh, Nellijon. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Uh, from the junior division Cougar team, this is the second junior team. Uh, second only uh, you know, on the list here. I'm sure they're equal in stature. Number 44 center uh, Mike Road. Number 45 defensive end James Kingsley. Number 41 wide receiver Jeff Kent. Number 43, running back Jeremy Friedler. And from the senior division Tigers, coached by uh, Mike Teague, number 48, tailback uh, Mike Ferriello. And uh, number 50, uh, looks like number 58, offensive guard Evan. Hey, we know he'll be watching this. As it was announced last week, uh, he did have a collapsed lung, and, and not necessarily related to football, but the, the young man uh, who is an outstanding athlete, going to be a tight end. The team this year has been in the hospital for about two weeks as of game time. He was operated on this week, Marty, and uh, uh, we hope he's recovering very, very well. I know Derek. I've known Derek for a long time, and I was talking with his father, Bill, last night that uh, he did have uh, surgery on his lung, uh, the arthroscopic variety, and they did stapling. Uh, and there, so hopefully he'll come out good as new afterwards and have recuperation. Still hoping to come back in time to play a couple of games. It's, uh, boy, what a tough break for a, for a nice young man, 17, 18 years old, and uh, senior year in football. He's, I know he's a very good basketball player, too. He's got two, two sport names. I know he was a key loss for Coach Philippone, so we're hoping he, he does recover and come back with all the best wishes to Derek. Yeah, that really is a, what the kids call a bummer. Yeah, well, he's another boy standing in there in the field on the sideline. I got Peter Clark, who hurt him. I guess he had a fractured elbow, I understand. And that was right before the. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. And another senior, so. Yeah. Pete Pete's an awful uh, good young man, also. Uh, sure, matter of fact, last time I had a chance to talk with Pete was at the blood bank. He was donating blood, and I was uh, back in August. And I asked him how he was thinking, and all the readings going to be fine. He says well, that was before he got injured, but then he was looking forward to a positive year. By the way, Pete, too, is, uh, is an excellent lacrosse player. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, I think uh, Pete has D1 uh, capability as far as lacrosse. And uh, hopefully he'll be back to have a nice senior year, at least that way. He's out for the season. He was going to be the prime snapper, and he's going to be like a nose tackle position also. So, too bad. Well, here we get ready to go in the second half. Come score is nothing, nothing. Madison Cable TV is very pleased to bring everybody out there at home. This like Friday night... I'm sorry. I was just gonna say Friday night football on Monday night. Yeah, yeah. Looks like we got Pete Lawler and uh, Eric Camel deep to receive the kickoff. Two, two speedsters. Moran will be kicking. And the rundown. Kick. Balls in the air. It's going to Hamill. He gets it. First chance to get his hands on the ball. 
He's moving up the middle. He may almost broke that. He had a wall in front of him of a four players. And one four in man made it in behind. It was a beautiful, beautiful blocking, and we talked about Eric in the first half. He's only a sophomore, and boy, he did a nice job. Aggressive run, followed his blocking. Great job by the by the uh, kick return team. Puts him in great field position to stop the. Uh, Nice job of coming out. Yeah, it was just a swiveler. Went further up in the air than it did down the field. I don't know, Frank. You think he did that intentionally? It doesn't seem very logical, but I, I think it I think he may have just miskicked that one. He must have miskicked it, because if you've got at least the wind working for you in one way or another, you might as well take advantage of it. Okay, Matt Gentile. Thank you. There's able hands move up on the Timmy. Have a seat. Hand is up the middle to uh, Good old Chris Torres. Boy, Chris was right on little Andy Drennan's back that time, and Andy was taking the big number 71 on the left side of the grand line and just pushed him. Chris ran right down his back, bounced off him, and then just kept going. I think Chris was helping to push Andy, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy did a nice job. But you can see number 71 there. He's quite large. You bet. Okay, here we go. Again. Up, ready for the hike. Hike. Up the middle with Scotty Gapkowski, a little bit off to the left. A guard makes it up to the 40-yard line, so it'll be a first down at the 40 for him. Just a nice blocking assignment by the entire line. And line it looked like the Zeman and Drennan again, and Hevesy coming from center. They're really driving them back. They look determined. They look fired up coming out in the second half. Let's see if they can sustain it. That's right. Nice and crisp coming out of the huddle. Move up to the line. Out of the trademark of a Daniel Hand offensive football line. All right, the ball comes back. It's a quick pass slant down the side. No good. intended for That was a low pass. Chris Thomas made a nice catch. I believe his name is Scott. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm following Chris. I coach for Chris too. I should know better than that. Chris is his older brother who played at Williams and played here for many years. Out of the see uh, family, uh, four young men have uh, all played for Daniel Hand. As you say, Chris uh, graduated from Yale and was outstanding player there. Uh, Williams, 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 yes. All right, up the center, basically, a little off left for uh, Scott Kempkowski. Another six, seven yard drive up there. Looked like a little bit of a counter on that play, and uh, had for in full. Matt did a nice job of making, and Chris came back to the left. I might as well finish the heavy story or take it a little bit further. Uh, Brother John is up at University of Maine, working uh, tackle position up there for the uh, U-Maine Bears. All right. Pass long, deep. A little bit, little bit too long again for uh, John, but he was open. He was open, and the pass was, was almost there. Again, yeah, the, uh, look at the way the wind blows, and it's blowing right toward the water, and that's the way that pass went. So it faded that way, didn't it? Yeah, yeah you're right. Okay, now. to down this ball. Not a, not a rush on. Kick is going down. Try to knock it. Try to oh, down it. Hand bounce. Yes, it is. And it is down. Looks uh, like uh, Mike Burrell is on the ball down there. Nice job by Mike Burrell. That's right. His job was to release and go down as fast as he could and try to down it like he did 
about the two-yard line. That's a big, big play. It puts them deep in the hole. We have not had the winning now count on that defense, which has been doing a good job all night so far, to hold them down there. That's as good as a long pass, basically. Okay, and now on defense. Oh, we let, let the announcer that's uh, <laughs> speakers right next to us see a die out on that. All right, far end from the two-yard line. Daniel Hand ready to punt. Up the We're center. 32. He met right at the line of the scrimmage. his shirts around him. It looked like... Uh... Yes! Well, they're giving him a spot of about a yard, and I don't know how they did that. It looks like Tim Hevesy, 78, was in on that play. Boy, a bunch of them made a tackle. They met 32, and that's what you got to do. 32 is the guy that just keeps bouncing off people. Well, again, he's their go-to guy, particularly in tight situations, and they can't afford any errors down there, any fumbles, any miscues. Uh, uh, it's a tight ball game, nothing, nothing. Right now, third period, strong field. Friday night, Madison Cable TV bringing you these actions. Okay, handoff goes deep. And it looks like it's going to be close for a first down. Nice hole opened up from a four-inch standpoint. They keep working on that right side, on their right side of the line, our left side, and uh, that time they were very successful. It was a big hole for number 24 to come through. Wow. Yeah, they're going to have to measure it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the flag man has already turned it to one, but I think that's premature. All depends on the spot out there. Let's hope it's in his favor, being partisan as we are. Well, I think it's the, the flag man is clearly a Paran guy, too. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> <laughs> Although it looks like you may have a tiger for him. First down, they gave it to him on the spot, it looks like. So we first push down from about the 11-yard line. So hand had a bottle left down there, and they still are. It's not, uh, they haven't gotten away yet, and we don't anticipate that they will. Daniel Hand, defense, ready to go to plug the gap. Greg Deacon Silius in there on the defensive end. Playing that position bit tonight. Okay. Net hard. Peter Wallace. i tell you what, great penetration by the line that time. Left side of the line shut it down that time. And I was watching uh, Mike Anderson, too, from the right guard spot. He made nice penetration. Uh, landed him two yards in the backfield as the ball was being so I'm sure that has an effect on the play also. Okay, uh, they're spotting now with about a three, four yard gain. Second down and six or seven. Depending on how uh, tight you want to call it, quarterback gets on his center. In motion to the right. Go to the counter play. And well, it's almost a ball down. Well, it looks like and it looks like they've got it. a strip by a hand uh, tackler in there. Uh, he definitely had a good control of the balls. He came through the line that ball you know, carrier. I, I saw Ryan Doris around the ball. Pete uh, Lawler recovered the ball. That's great. I saw it popping out of Matt Gentile's hands. Nice job by Pete. Ryan Doris was around, around the ball. Yeah, Doris, Doris, and Lawler. Some yeah. sort of a lot for him out there, perhaps. <laughs> it looked like it just came out of his hands. I, I, he, he had a nice hole. Well, I, I think there was somebody kind of kind of hooked the uh, elbow on it. Yeah, uh, yeah I kind of saw a black arm band go through the, through the uh, which was a good strip. We'll take those. Hand takes it over on the 24-yard line. Up the middle Up of the Doris. Middle. Yes. Nice job again by the line, hoping that hole for, for Chris. Torres on the carry. Chris Torres is, takes his quick couple of steps up the center, makes himself some room, and then goes for it. About a five-yard gain on first down. All right, now here. You always take it easy when you start out second and four. You bet. You bet. Second and four, five yards to go. Well, you got Kempkowski split very wide out here to the left. I haven't seen that before. Torres up the middle. He only got about two, I'd say, before his, uh, post, his forward progress was part. Just like Moran did it. He anticipated that well. They stuffed the middle pretty good. He certainly did. Like I said, I haven't seen Kempkowski come out like that before, I don't think. So, uh, I thought it might have been a trick play up. Guess not. All right. And going wide on third down with two yards to go. But Scott Hevesy, number three, Hevesy. Okay, but the ball's going to the right. Counters right, first down at the two. Just a great job by the line, great job by Matt Gentile. They counted, they counted back to the left. Nice, great run, just nice execution. Scotty Gumkowski running up the 
no stats again this week. Let's see. Now, normally I would say I'd call this next play a, the go-to man, Dorez. Up the, up the middle or slightly off to the right. Inside that five. They... Yeah, the right is stuck pretty well over the middle. Right. Four chances. It's Kapkowski. Yeah, he's going to be sitting on the line, I think. Not quite a TD, but it should be in there. He was right on Chris Dorez's back. The line did a nice job, but Grand linebackers were anticipating it. But... Nice surge by the offensive line. You don't have to pick up very much yardage when it's first down. And Scotty comes out to get himself a little rest, a well-deserved rest. All right, man. They're on the backfield now. They're on a power eye formation. All right. Ball oh, goes in the Burrell. He's up the center. He's in. Yeah. Well, I've been impressed with uh, Burrell this year so far. Dude, he's really come on strong. Big point after here in a tight game. Big point after. Into the wind, the flush wind. The last drive, kicks up. There it is. Very good. good. Boy, that's a tough kick with the wind blowing like it is tonight. You know, I think he purposely kept it low, too. I don't know if yeah. the trajectory, I think, is very low, and I think Sean did that on purpose. He has that sort of ability, I think, now. That is a big one, you're right. With five minutes, 37 seconds left in the third period, Daniel Land takes the lead. Seven to nothing on this Friday night football game on Monday night. Well, I'm sure, uh, I would have loved to have been in the locker room because the boys came firing out. I'm sure they had a few words of encouragement. Don't you think, Frank? I absolutely, yeah. Uh, that, that's absolutely correct on that. And they did come out ready to play. Now, let's see if they can keep it up as the hand fight song is played down in front of us. Everybody charges up and will be kicking into the wind and across wind. Let's see what Sean chooses to do. He's on this near side. Well, I think I try to do this like a trick mouth shot. Try to get it to hook left or hip hook right into the wind. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't know. I have enough trouble playing golf. I well, I said I'd actually <laughs> slice, so I think this would be my trick slice. Trick shot. <laughs> Okay, Sean, get ready for a second kick and uh, about one minute time here. One minute running time. Everybody's ready. Keep in back for a foreign ball. Up. Ball. Up the middle. You bet. No trajectory. Oh, right down. And it stays. It's down. Almost. And pursues. And the runner is almost. He kicks it up to the 20. They dodged the bullet on that one, all right. You know, look, Mark Gunkowski had him pinned back there. He just slipped by him. He did a nice job of getting down, forcing the action. Looked like Dora is in on the tackle. That was Chris Dora. Yeah, we've got a man down on the field for four in. Uh, it was a cramp or a knee. I can't quite tell. Uh, he's holding his knee up in the uh, air. Uh, looks like a cramp. If they take the end of his foot and start pressing it in, it's going to be a cramp. Well, you hate to see that. He looks... Yeah, well, he looks okay. like he's in some pain. Yeah, that's a cramp, but, uh, yeah. which happens quite often when yeah. you just come in from uh, being in the locker room and start moving again. A little dehydration starts to set in. No, fortunately, uh, it is typically an injury that it can work out. It looks either a cramp or a hamstring. Oh, that was a big, big drive by uh, Hand. Okay, Hand's trainer moves out on the field. Bev Volpe and their... Uh, Bill Volpe, we might as well mention now, a really fine young lady who's a trainer for the team, moves out there and uh, we'd like to congratulate Babe and her husband Dave because as she runs out there, she's carrying two, carrying one plus herself. Wow, that's great. That's terrific. So Bev, uh, Bev makes herself, her way out there in the field. She can tell that that is a cramp from the young man, it looks like. She's working the, the toe in to try to release the... Uh, Probably a Charlie horse or what have you on that particular one. So play is stopped here on the field while we tend to the injury out there. He's walking out there, the trainer and Dr. Square are over with him, and now we resume play. Moran takes the offense, man in motion, hand off his to the motion man. He's coming up field, a little bit in the open, nice open field tackle by Chris Torres. With a little assist from his friends, particularly Matt Jenkins. Like yeah, and Pete Lola was in on that tackle too. Pete and other, all these boys playing the youth. I remember coaching with Pete. 
acknowledging some of the boys in the line there. You've got Tim Hevesy at left tackle. Keith looks like Joe Donnelly at left guard. Mike Anderson looks like right guard. And Greg DeConcilius at uh, right tackle. Very good. Okay, then, man of motion. Counter right position, pullback, takes it. It's going to be third down. and gained about two on that, so it's going to be third and about three. I'll tell you what, Aronson is just so deceptive. I, I keep looking the wrong way. He's pulling me up here. Must be a tough job in the linebackers. But they've got better eyes than you and I, Frank. Well, they've got a little different angle than we have, because if that body is holding, you know, is covering it up, uh, uh, not to say they don't have the eyes. <laughs> well, he, he, is, he is an exceptional... Uh, he just has very, very good skills at uh, faking. Excellent. I really admire a young kid that can do that sort of thing. I'm going to hand it to him. Okay, ball goes to the left. Nice pickup on that by Greg DeConcilius. Big play by DeConcilius. Yeah, he followed that right off. The handoff went, again, it was an uh, opposite play of last time. And, uh, that was a huge play because fourth down in their own zone, they're going to have to punt the ball away. Yeah, it speaks well for men staying at home, too, isn't it? All right. Position where a defensive end is to pretty well stay there. In uh, the case of such a counter play as that, Greg did it, did it well. Well, you know, 32, their, their power runner is uh, walking off the full field very slowly, so we're probably wearing him down, which is I, nice. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy night to be out there. Okay, a very short punt again. That's hardly making the line of scrimmage. And it takes a hand pass backwards. Oh, 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 almost dangerous play out there. Though. Well, I tell you what, it looked, there was great, great penetration, which I'm sure is by Deacon Silly, or looked like uh, Greg Deaconcilius and Mike Anderson. Uh -huh. Coaches congratulating them, they, they don't miss that. They got in there and rushed the kicker. Well, and Anderson and Deaconcilius were right, almost blocked that kick, okay. which uh, caused them to hurry. Tremendous field position here in the 30. 36-yard line. Yeah, 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 I see Pete Clark down there talking to Greg also. Pete's doing a nice job sideline coaching it as a player. Nice job, Pete. Okay, hand on offense. That Gentile on the center. Takes the ball. Hands off to good pass. No, he doesn't. He did a nice fake job. Unfortunately, the pass is intercepted. Sean Lynch tackles uh, the interception on about the four-yard line. They're trying that deep. They've, they've tried it four times down there now. Into the, wind. Yeah. into the wind. Yeah. Into the wind. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure on a on a nice calm day we'd have a lot more success, but it's tough in the wind tonight. Yeah, it's kind of a shape too because uh, we thought Gumkowski had the ball and he had it wide open up the center. Yeah. Nice fake on Matt's standpoint. Uh, sorry about the interception. Number. Yeah. Number well, two uh, You know, it's, it's easy to second guess, but uh, had had he. Uh, had the quick strike and been in the end zone. That's right. Would have been we were saying what a great call. So. Singing a different <laughs> song. So. All right, up the center, fullback. Out to about the eight yard line. Maybe, maybe a four or five yard gain on that. Just the, consistently, a lot of hand plays around the ball, which is which is terrific. One player is not going to bring down, particularly number 32. Chris Torres, again, looked like he made the initial contact. A bunch of people. I know Matt Gentile was in there. A bunch of the linemen closed in. Yeah, again, Great job. Yeah, we mentioned the youth. We continue to say the youth. Uh, the sophomore uh, action out there. Uh, but they are really playing senior senior type of play right now. Watching the ball, seeing where it's going. Uh, collapsing on the, on the play just like that. Yeah, have about five, six back shots right on the ball. Seeing it well. Looks like... Uh, Chris Holt on that play, too. Yeah, I think Great. you're right. Wasn't Chris hurt uh, prior to the season, I believe? Uh, he had some sort of an injury, you're right, at yeah. one point, uh, coming back from that and doing a nice job. Boy, they made a nice, nice play on that, along with Tim, uh, Timmy Hevesy also on that side. They, they're picking on that, on the left side of our line, and uh, our boys seem to be responding. Joe Donnelly over there, and Tim Hevesy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Holt there now, and Chris Doris on this side. Ryan, Ryan Doris, Doris, number 32, over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, third down and about four or five. Gotta be a pass. Nice pass, nice fake. Going deep, it's too long. Great coverage by Lola. There you go. All right. Great yeah. coverage by Lola. I'll tell you what, I was faked again. He's doing a terrific job out there, that Aaron's. Yeah, he really is. Until I saw him going deep, I didn't think it was going to be a pass. And uh, there he goes. So it's fourth down. They'll be punting from, uh, well, the punt will be uh, hitting. Hitting from about the five, uh, they haven't been punting real well. Uh, the best they would do is come back maybe about the 45 with it. 
Uh, depending on what happens up here, they are again kidding, kicking with the breeze a little bit in their favor, although going across the field. They're coming from their own end zone. Right out of the end zone, yes sir. And he's taking plenty of time and rush. has a rush. Mm. Nice pick up, Timmy Cunningham with the ball. He bobbles a little bit, but he's looking forward. He makes, all right, he keeps his balance. Five, six yards, flags down. Way to recover. However, there's a flag on the plate. Yeah, flags down. Don't know what he's going to be And it looks like it may be against, I think it may have been a clip on us. Yeah, that, that's usually the position to be coming from. Yeah. Cliffy signal. Cliffy signal, you're right. Uh, 15 yards going to be coming back. That's unfortunate. Will start right at the 50, down. I would say. Well, we still got great field position starting out. Yep, that's okay. From about the hand 49-yard line. I wouldn't be surprised if he's he grounded out on this uh, series, Frank. I wouldn't either. Well, he's still going seconds. in. Yeah, that's right. 51 seconds going into the wind. Uh, try to get down there so that when you do change, pick up a first down and then have the wind in your back. That's right. I think that would be an excellent, uh, an excellent call on that standpoint. All right, hand ready. Timmy has the ball. Passes it back. Up the center, Chris Torres. He goes forward in progress to about the 48-yard line, 47-yard line of forehand. Okay. Chris Torres, nice, uh, kept those feet moving. Yeah, he almost Brand broke through, a nice too. Job, uh, the first, the first <laughs> forehand tackle had Chris on the upper body with just an arm tackle. Chris almost broke it, but he was slowed down just enough for help to come up. All right, again, Heversey takes the ball. Back to Gentile. Hands the second man coming to Gamkowski. Gamkowski forward to about the 44. Maybe 43, so it should be third down and about one, I'd say, on that, Marty. I'll tell you what, there was a big uh, big hole on that side of the line at the end of the third quarter, but great job by the left side of the line that time. Chris Torres coming through on the, uh, uh, with the lead block and Scotty right on his tail again. You know, so much... Uh, there's so much to do with execution, and if you can, if you can, uh, if that lead back, if you can get right on his tail, quite often it results in a lot of few extra yards. Okay, we have fourth period ready to start. Daniel Hand will have the ball at about the 44-yard line of four in. On the way, hopefully into the goal is seven to nothing. Daniel Hand, as we we look at this very tough defensive battle we've had, Hand has been pressuring all night long. Uh, Forehand has not been able as yet to get any offense really going. The defense for him, young as it is, has been doing a tremendous job. All right, Matt Gentile. Set flankers, left and right. Takes the ball up, put the, the Torres. Torres hit many times. And he's still able to fall off the that's, that's a huge play by Chris Torres. Looked look like the, the uh, linebacker, number 56, That reminded me of his father. When his father is uh, playing softball and running down to first base, you can't stop that guy. You know that. We no, both played with Mike out there. In my opinion, he takes definitely after his mother, not his father. Ah, well, it's probably the brains coming yeah. from home. Okay. Here we have Scotty Gumkowski. Hey, great run by Scotty. Great hole by the line. All right, we have Rob Mason in there taking some uh, five, taking some tackle position work. Five. Rob also was uh, injured earlier in the season. He got getting back just to get a few uh, downs in last week. I thought he did a marvelous job while he was in there. Two sophomores on the left side of the line, I believe. It looks like Anderson and uh, Andy Drennan opening some holes over there. And Timmy Heavy right. sees another well, sophomore. Gonna, okay, nice we got to keep him by Matt. He's going up to the right side. One blocker. Okay. Scotty uh, Hemmersey did take a, take a block, and I get my notebook in the way of the camera. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, give, uh, give 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 great credit to Matt Gentile and uh, and Scott Kumkowski on that. Scott, uh, they did a great fake. It, it sure pulled the entire Ferran defense. Hey, they, they sold that all the way. They probably could sell the Brooklyn Bridge the way they sold that thing. Great job, and and then Matt made a nice did a nice job of hitting that, turning it around the end pretty quickly. Timeout. Their defensive end just went, took, went all the way to the other side of the field. So did the linebackers. 
Okay, we had equipment time out of the field. The hand regroups up there in the, in the huddle. Follow the play. Okay, moving up. We had uh, the draft going wide, wide left. Brad Hevesy in tight in the slot. Okay, up the center low goes Chris Doran. Just continues to move those legs. Looks like Ferran has gone to a 6-2, 6-2 defense. Probably trying to shut down that run, turn them inside. I believe they're in 4-4 in the 4-4 uh, defense with four linebackers in the first half. They're trying to get it so that they can fill the slots, I would say, on the blocking lane for the from defense. Okay, you're right. There they go. They're, they're loading up that front line, trying to keep everything in tight. Up the center with another good blocking. Dunkowski holds it in for a first down on about the sixth yard line. Now a run by uh, Scotty Gunkowski. Great job in lining it. Yeah, that was on his right side that time. Yeah. He went right up between the, the guard tackle hole. It looked like and there was a hole there for guard tackle. Hey, Scotty and uh, Scott, Scott Gunkowski and Chris Torres are just two, two similar runners in that they just punished the, the defendant. They hit that hole so quickly. Graf playing a tight end position. Okay, again, Gumkowski up. Three-yard gain. It will be second down and goal from the three. Looked like a power eye that time again with Doraz and Deacon Zilius uh, leading the blocking. Oh, successful before. Let's see what it does. We have a four-end man on the field. Looks like another cramp to me. Number 71, big boy. This is the time of a game. You start to see those cramps take hold. He's six, this fellow, Jason Winter, is 6'2", 240, so wearing a fellow down that size uh, says a lot for the hand line. As cold as it feels out here tonight, uh, with the wind blowing and everything, those big fellows produce a lot of steam. And that's the way, well, is she working on a muscle or is she working on the knee? I, it's kind of hard to tell what that's doing down there right from this angle. Looks like Ferran has a new guy, a uh, new fellow in it left. They tackle. I wouldn't be surprised if they went right at him. Sometimes those guys come right off the bench. Frank, it's uh, you want to work on him right away. Well, okay, we still have a man on the field. Bev working on him. Dr. Sclair asking if he has Blue Cross or Blue Shield. Okay, up he comes. It's uh, probably another muscle. We see him kind of hobble on that thing. Well, fortunately, it doesn't look like a serious injury. No, he's going to go off under his own power, as he must. He has to go out for at least one play. Tells taking his time. Tells you what a tough game it is. When a, he's one of the biggest fellows on their team. And, uh, well, their substitute who will be going in to take his position, I think, is at number 77? No, I think number 61. I think it was a left, uh, he's a left tackle. So, And with that power eye, they may be coming right at him. I, I would. I'd go for that uh, new man on oh, the block. Like timeout. So. This looked like the way they were run, lining it up for the power eye, too. Okay, he's going to get it. It is, uh, I don't know if that was uh, planned. It doesn't look like the coach uh, seems okay. totally pleased with that. We're going to have second down from uh, uh, goal to goal from the three-yard line for Daniel Hand. And we'll take a break right now. Fourth period, nine minutes plus left. This Daniel Hand football game on Friday nights. We'll go to you on Monday night as you see this at home. And Daniel Hand moving up. Second down, three yards to goal. That looks like well, power eye again, and they do. And it's Scotty Gumkowski, he crosses the plane. Touchdown! That's just a great job by Number Scotty Gumkowski. What do you think about that? Well, I'll tell you what, it was it was a little deception on uh, on uh, on Coach Philippon's part that they lined up in a power eye left and uh, had the lead back going left. Torres came right, and uh, Scotty Gunkowski right on his tail into the pin zone. So a few of the linebackers go with the... Uh... All right, Daniel Hand, fixtures out there. There we have Sean Lynch ready. He kicks, it's up, it's low trajectory, but it's good. That's uh, number two for the right for Sean. He scores 14 nothing. Daniel Hand for the period. All right, Daniel Hand, we're excited, folks. It's a cold night out here. It's great to see all the, the hand students supporting me. A lot of enthusiasm down there. That really is. That's great. See the kids down there singing along with the, with the band, working with the cheerleaders, charging up their players. 
Now Daniel Hand will be kicking off again. 14 to nothing. Addison Cable TV bringing everybody the action. We will have Sean Lynch again teeing it up to kick off. Well, here's where you don't want to make any mistakes. We've got a 14 point lead, nine minutes of those games, and uh, Coach Philippon is telling the cover on this one. You bet. And uh, you've also got a very dangerous four end team out there. They're, they're boys that uh, know how to come back. They did last week. It's the Harding High of Bridgeport. Daniel Hand is going to get ready to go. They're, they're looking like they're going to try to foul up the uh, blocking assignments out there. Because they're still in a huddle, get ready to take. Take their position. The, uh, the referees push the game into the play. Ready to go. Roll to the ground. Sean Lynch, single Jetty. Way to go. The ball is swift. Down low. It's touched the slide. Boom. Oh, man. That nice run back. Well, that was scary because the guy that picked it up in full stride was number 24, who happens to be one of their backs, Ryan Cottingham. And I'll tell you what, he broke one more tackle. He had some daylight. He may have broken. He sure did. And he knew just what to do. Once he was hit, he just lunged forward and got himself another three, four yards out of that. All right, Hens defense will be taking on the defense from the four-end, 44-yard line as four-end moves to the ball. Quarterback sets himself under the hiker. There will be a snap, and it is, and it's uh, Keeper. Yes, Foran going to pass, and it's downfield, and we see. And him tackled and swung down on about the 30-yard line. Tackled by Holt, Torres, but uh, big play for uh, Foran. Uh, very again. Not only they get to pick up 20 or so yards, but they stop the clock, 8.40. If they can get a quick score here, they're going to be back in the game. So it's time for, for Hand to pick it up here. That's right. Hand didn't have any uh, rush on either uh, to speak of. Uh, so the quarterback had his time to set up real well, real strong. And he threw that on a rope, but a nice touch on it, too. Okay. Up to center. Center's hit. Okay. Slowed up real well in there. That was Mike Anderson who slowed him down. Great job. Mike Just like Anderson. Conley, Deacon Silius, Torres, Tim Cunningham on the tackle. But uh, give great, they give big credit to Mike Anderson for right. He did a great job on slowing him up. I thought he had him. He had him real well. He just didn't have leverage enough to pull him down. But he was able to stop him for a loss of about a yard on the play. He'll be second down now at about 11 and a half yards to go from the uh, 31 yard line of Daniel Hand. Sure looks like 32. Damian Treats lost some steam. He's, he was sure firing out there in the, early in the game. Fortunately, he's. Okay, yes, another, another pass. pass, looking pass, looking danger. Passes down and tipped. It was tipped by Timmy Cunningham. Yeah, there. Big, there was pass interference on that. Just as, uh, just as um, number 88 was coming across the metal, it looked like um, Matt Gentile hit him. Uh, and the ref caught it, unfortunately. So. Uh, it's going to be a first down then. Yeah. Pass interference is going to take it about 15 yards be a first down. And that'll be from about the 16-yard line. So first threat, first deep penetration of the evening for Forehand. And about the 16-yard line down here. You know, it was tough about that. That ball sailed well over their head. Had the ball met, been there, uh, you know, you may have timed it just properly. But Forehand knows that the clock's against him. We're under eight minutes now. And then a 4-4 defense. 4-4 defense. We got a little rush on the passer, but he's completed it on about the 14-yard line. I'll tell you what, give Aronson uh, and Ferran credit. Uh, Aronson's a cool customer, and he looks very smooth back there. Experienced quarterback, and he's firing those passes. He is. He's, he's, he's leading the pass uh, very well, it looks like. I think he's quite a talented young fellow, and I think if I remember right, he's a junior, isn't he? He's a junior, and he looks like uh, he's been playing for five years. I mean, he's, uh, he just looks, he looks like he has the lead the way he's out there. Very well seasoned for a uh, varsity player. All right, there he goes. Handoff is 24 to the right. Making penetration. He's top of the ball. It's possible. Hand has it again, and they do. Hand picks up the fumble ball. I'll tell you what, somebody ripped that ball out. I don't know. I believe it was number 24, Tim Cunningham. 
Yeah. Well, somebody pulled it, caught him from behind. Big, big play. Yeah, big play is right. And I think if yeah. you could watch that on an instant replay, you'd see that the runner was kind of carrying that a little bit loose out to his side, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was the fellow that fumbled the last time as well. I'll tell you what, but, uh, well, it looks like uh, Mark Kamkowski may have recovered that fumble. Is that right? Tim Cunningham ripped it out. Oh, first if time. I, uh, if it's we... Mark Kamkowski, first chance we've had to call his name tonight. Okay, good, good play, young man. All right, and we'll control play now. Under seven minutes, and let's see, maybe a yard on that. The second, about nine, on the 11 yard line of Daniel Hand. Hand on the move. Picking up on that miscue of Moran. Wind picks up a little bit, we'll blow past our mics here. Moran's got to be kind of demoralized right now. They're inside the 10 and they don't score. Side pitch up to Burrell, but he's thrown for about a two yard loss. A little bit high, a little bit high for him. Uh, that's, yeah, you know, it's, it's tough with that wind, that, that pitch out here. Because I'm sure it goes very smooth in practice, but that wind side is pretty tough to. Uh, Stirred down at about 12 yards. Normally you consider this a, a passing situation, but uh, this close to the uh, end zone, just keeping your own turn down. I don't know if you'll do that with showing three receivers going. Mike Richards on this side. However, it's up to center for Chris Torres, and he's on the move. Does he do the first down? Well, I it think looks like it. Sure. Big, big play by Chris Torres. Those are two huge plays by Chris. Earlier in the third quarter when he picked up that third down, he get hit early. I mean, he was hit twice on that play. There's no no way he should have made that play. Nice, nice coverage by Ferran. He just made it at all. Yeah, I'm just determination. Yeah, the go-to go guy. Big first down. Big first down. I guess you're probably right. He does take after his mother. Okay, here we go. That, under the snapper. Timmy, ball back. Up again, quick to Chris. Here he comes again. He's weaving his way up. One tackle, two tackles left. He's up there and he's down on about the 36-yard line. Got a first down. Give big credit to the front line again. There was, some, there was some nice holes initially, and Chris just exploited them. I'll tell you what, he had one more guy to beat or he was gone. That's right. It looks like it's the first play of the game, the way he's hitting those holes. Really is. Nice. Chris coming out of the huddle, his hands, hands offensive line. Moving into position. The defense takes his hold. And again, up the middle to Chris. They're working off that right side, and he's up there for another six, seven yard game. You know, you can't see every lineman at every play, but that time I was watching Rod Dezemer, and he just took his man right out of the play. Chris followed right through the hole. Nice tackle by Rod, I mean, nice block by Rod Dezemer. Rod Dezemer, one of the power men on Hand's uh, weightlifting group down there, and also a wrestler in, in another life. Hand up there. Mike Richards on this side, on the uh, tight end slot. Okay, going to the left. Kamkowski, lot open. Two men in front of him. Almost breaks it. Up you know, to the uh, four and 40, 40 yard. You know, Frank, the line is just so determined. They're fired up. And, and to watch Scott Kamkowski and Chris Torres, you never know who's in there. They both hit those holes so quick. And they both keep accelerating through the run. They're both two terrific runners. They got a great, I'll tell you, the, 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 young, uh, the young front line is doing a terrific job. You bet. Okay, here we go. We get tight out on the field. Okay, again, after that timeout, Daniel Hand on the move from the 40 and 40 yard line. First down, 10 to go. You know, let's, uh, the, the, the left side of that line seems to be doing a great job. They, looks like uh, Scott Jankowski followed that Mike Richards and, uh, and Joel Donnelly on that last play. Okay. Give those boys Got a similar look to the line this time with tight end Richards over in the left. Okay, Matt under the ball, takes it, but it's coming to the right. Gumkowski breaking, breaking out of tackle. He's close to being free. Close, he keeps moving. He's up to the 20. He's out of bounds on the 20. How about that? we got a flag down. 15 yard line, and the flag is thrown after the play. Uh oh. We got a four-hand player really upset at one of the hand players. I didn't see what was going on down there, but it was a long ways away from the play. Well, let's let's talk about that play. Scott Kamkowski just, what a determined run. Four tackles he broke. He just kept going, going, going. It's got to be frustrating for Rand. They're, they're rapping, he's just ripping through the, the tackles. Oh, I, I just, uh, 
that, that young man is such a strong runner, uh, playing a tail position, he is hard. He runs like a fullback all the time. And uh, it was neat to see that. But I have to hand it to a couple of guys in the 4 team. I saw a couple of linemen who had recovered and actually number 77 helped make the tackle. Yeah. On a, on well, you know, the, the, the linebacker on that play, I believe it was number 56, uh, stood up stood up the lead blocker. I don't know who that was, but he stood him up and Scotty just ran right through him. All right, that, that uh, flag was a personal foul against Foran and moves the ball down to the 10. It'll be Daniel Hand. I Hands the ball, first and ten from the ten for the goal. Uh, they got the down marker only on the field, so it's got to be a touchdown to, to uh, go in. You got four chances to go ten. Just like that, and Chris Torres is up, and I think the touchdown about a yard short. Just short of a yard, as a matter of fact. Chris wanted the touchdown, but a great run again. Great, great hold. Uh, just shy of the touchdown on the one yard line. Okay, that was Rod Mason on that side again, uh, helping him build, build the hole. Okay, as they move to the line again, tight end is over here on the right hand side. Mike Richards, Cornette is and Rob. And Zima. And there we go, Matt, Hank, Paul, Gumkowski up the center, number three. Hat trick on the night. I'll tell you what, if, you, if anybody is, uh, is taping this game and they rewind it, Take a look at the way the uh, the hand line just just was so low. They just undercut the entire Moran line. Ab ab absolutely got themselves up there and did a dive. Turtle. Moran boys have played a nice game, but you can see them limping now. It's got to be a long, a long game. You yeah, always backpedal and it's tough. Three minutes, 45 left in the game. Sean Lynch gets ready to do the kicking chores again. On the point after, it's up. It's fun. I think it yet. Great win because uh, Moran came out like a football team tonight. They were playing, a, they played very tough. And when you can see this game was 0-0 for an awful long time. Yeah, you bet. And when you when you get the fact that the, the, the concern for hand was to have a the decent defense work, it has worked exceedingly well, I think, tonight. You know, Frank, you, you, you have to think that the conditioning a lot of these kids go through. Hand, hand has a reputation for conditioning their athletes for very well and, and, and a lot harder than other teams, but it sure pays off in the second half when you consider 0-0 zero, zero at halftime and uh, 21 points on the board right now for Han, zero for Coran. So. Yep, and then when you're uh, the team that's backing up all the time, that's a hard way. They're coming at you all the time. And uh, there's some good-sized boys out there for Daniel Hand. Uh, something that's always concerned me over my 15 years or so watching Hand football is Kind of the lack of size a lot of times. Every now and then we, we've been able to have some outstanding players like Justin Kingsley of last year, who's now with the Bucknell team. And uh, we're going to say he's just an outstanding athlete all the way around. Yeah, but it's uh, not unusual to see 150 pound linemen too, and they just. That's they right. That's right. Okay, that's it. A scrubber again to keep it down and dirty. And the uh, running back picks it up. Number 24 Cunningham there. He's down on the 32 yard line. Boy, 20, 24 has had a busy night. <laughs> I'm not sure he wants to wants to get all those scrubbers because uh, he gets pounded every time. But uh, that was a rocket, that one. That came at him pretty hard. And looks like first and 10. Yes, indeed. Looks like we got some new boys here and they see if we can acknowledge some of them. Yes, let's I see, see Mark Kamkowski out here. At line, outside linebacker number 12. 29 to nothing. Time to get players in. Give them a chance to pick up their letter. Get, get uh, points towards the letter, if you will. That pass was no good to number 24. It was a bullet. Uh, uh, it, it was right on the numbers. And you well, 24 thought. and the Paddington's played a good game. It's, looks like there's number 90 in there also. Chris Dora has come out the field. The Mike Richards was uh, Mike, an inside linebacker. Yeah, Mike Richards is in there doing the, ca the defensive captaining chores out there at the moment. Eric Hamill out here at 20, number 22. Okay, you know, like doing some defense. He's been doing mainly offense. And, uh, okay, we got a rush on the uh, quarterback. And he is taken down. Right, he's he's chased chase out of the pocket. Significantly, down. nobody opened for him to pass to. So there was a rush on, and they did a good job with it. Looks did like Ryan Doris is in there. Ryan Doris played a good game today. He's coming out the field now. 
Okay. Lions played an excellent game. Number two of the Doris and Doris combine. And uh, looks like Mike Burrell in an outside linebacker spot there. Okay, that's right. Mike Burrell's in on there. Who's number 86? I don't have him. That's it. I think it's number 88 is, uh, is uh, Dan Guadaparro. Dan Guadaparro, 88. All right, balls up and out of bounds. On a pass down about the uh, Daniel Hayden 48, so it's a first down for Florian. As Ann puts in uh, some wind to get a little seasoning out there. For a apologies to number 86 for the point that it's Tom Hawkins. I know Tom's not playing this year because of that engine leg. So. That, that's correct. So we'll have to try to update our schedule and our uh, programs for next week. I want to give all these men the credit that they can because it's a long, hard season out there from August on. Okay, another pass, short pass, almost, almost, uh, okay, almost, uh, almost got sacked back there, but another complete tackle by uh, Dan McGrath. Dan McGrath almost in a very nice play in it, that he was in the backfield, he had his arms around him, and uh, quarterback was lucky to get the ball off. Yes, he was. There was a nice blocker back there by one of the, uh, one of the four end backs to keep it just enough to drive him past the quarterback. Looks like we have Chad Davis uh, at, at right guard and uh, Mike Salmani, big boy, uh, number 74, is at left guard. Another pass, another pass. pass. He's going deep. And no, no good, and almost. Intended for that time McGrath did get to the quarterback and just Second missed being late, I think. Just okay, missed. Dude. Number 86 did a nice job. Uh, Nice job back there of coverage. Okay, Dan Gunapero is Again, out there on a, on a chase wearing his brother's old number. Oh, John Gunapero from a couple years ago on the uh, 89th state championship team. Mm -hmm. Good to see Dan out there. We also have at uh, a left guard number 69. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have him on the right. Okay, quarterback looking pass again. He's being chased out of the pocket, and his guy is knocked down by McGrath. Uh, he's got it down by number 80, Peter McGrath. Nice job by Peter McGrath. 77. Who? Number 77. Who's on that toe? Number 77 was Chad Davis. Nice Chad job. Davis. Okay, Mr. Number. Good going, Chad. He uh, pressured the quarterback real hard. Actually, started to get some jersey in his hand. Uh, we got another lineman in there, number 73, Mike Salmani, did a nice job for a few plays in there. Okay. All right. Looking against third down and 10. Looking for another pass here. It's a passing down, obviously. He's rolling left, passing back to the rolling right, passing left. Nice open field tackle down there. Yeah. Scott Kukowski, nice play. Younger brother of Scott Kukowski. Very good. Gumbo. I'll tell you, this young, this young team out here, this yeah, it's a great time to give them some experience. That's right. I, that's one of the key stories. If you can get yourself a lead and get players in there on varsity experience, we've got a whistle. That really is a good move. I, I know, you know, you, you look at the, the state polls and all that, and a lot of teams that tend to run it up. They tend to shut out. Uh, it's good to see Coach Phillip on giving these boys an opportunity to play. Yeah, I've always felt that that's one of the keys to, to uh, being able to have sustaining a program is getting some good experience in the early years, if you can. Uh, sometimes you do a whole, wholesale uh, substitution. I kind of think it's good to, to get the young players in there, kind of uh, in among the veterans, if you will, so they can learn from the veterans on the field. But nonetheless, if you can get some minutes out there early in the season, their, their sophomore year, that takes some season, for their junior year, and you can really start to sustain good winning football tradition at that point. It's a heck of a lot different being out there uh, for a few minutes. Seeing what comes at you. The quarterback passed off the 32, the fullback, their first running play, trying to get a first down. I think they did it. Uh, as opposed to trying to give it up, we got a minute and 30 left. Going with a quick snap. No huddle offense. Oh, we got movement. And a flag. It's got to be offensive movement. Okay, that should pu push Ferrer and back to about the 25. Ferrer lined up offside. It's penalized five yards. Back to the 25. Sophomore Matt from Ronde just came in the game. Down. Number 20. Okay. Right here at the right, right on the right side in the secondary. You got it. Okay, quarterback keeping. Looking pass, and he's hit. Oh, 
Excellent pass. Excellent pass all the way out. Excellent receiver. 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 Excellent rece
Yeah, they were all under classroom they were in there. So you that's a good experience. Up the center goes Mark Kowski. Like his brother from the QB State. Just about four or five yards to his credit. Nine seconds late. Seven on the countdown. And the Defense, defense came forward, shining style. The offense did a very, very strong job up there. Uh, we saw the sophomores, the seniors, all coming through in good shape. Uh, excellent for the young men, if you will. I think Daniel Hand is uh, looking for a strong, strong season this year. I hope they can keep the attitude going, one game at a time, one game at a time. I think that's the way to look at it.